Happy Tasty Tuesday, everyone. I am going to wait just a minute for some folks to hop on, and I am a few minutes early, but that's just because I wanna go ahead and share things out and get that done before we get started. So as you're hopping on, tell me hello, and tell me what you're having for dinner. <clears throat> I have my laptop over here, so I am going to use it to start sharing out. And if you guys will do the same, hit the little share button and we'll get started in a few minutes. I am a few minutes early, um, but that's just because I wanted to be able to share this out and kind of get started on time. So bear with me while I'm sharing, if you will also share, that would be fantastic. And I am going to share this into a few of my parties that are going on. So if you were one of my current hosts and I shared into your party group, um, maybe go in there and tag some of your friends to join us. As you're hopping on, tell me hello, comment so I can see that you are able to see this. And then as soon as I get this shared to a few places, we will get started. And I'm going to go over a few things just like last week, and then we're going to make a delicious meal, and we are making a complete meal, so that is super exciting. Okay, I can see some of you hopping on. I'm just trying to find a couple more groups. Okay, all right, let me change my screen. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Hold, please. Okay, hey, Sheree. Hey, Cherie, can you hear me okay? Y'all give me some thumbs and hearts if you can hear me. I see Cherie's comment, but my computer is not showing me who is hopping on, but maybe it will in a minute. Um, and I cannot read that far away. So, um, welcome to Tasty Tuesday. This is week two, and I'm super excited to have you guys um, join me while I'm here in my kitchen. We are going to make a complete meal in the air fryer. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but I want to give enough time for people to hop on. Hey, Rebecca. All right, let me make sure it's going to show me all the comments. Um, while we are waiting to get started, which we will in just a minute, be sure and hit the little share button, sprinkle this out, or tag some of your friends in the comments. Um, private message them, whatever. Tell them to come and join us in Tasty Tuesday. Um, we are making pork chops, Brussels sprouts, and bacon-wrapped asparagus for dinner tonight. This is all keto-friendly, but I will also tell you how you can change it if you're not keto or low-carb. Um, super, super easy. I'm not heating up my kitchen because we are using the air fryer that is behind me. I know that's going to be a little hard to see, but um, we'll talk about it in a minute. And I hope that you guys will stay with me. If you are watching this on replay, be sure to type hashtag replay so I know you came in later and saw this. In the description of this um, live, it does have the party link for this week's Tasty Tuesday. So whether you are watching this live or on replay, you may use that link to shop on this week's Tasty Tuesday party. And we are gonna make a little modification I will be collecting orders on this party until Monday night at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then on next week's Tasty Tuesday, we will draw for the winner of this week's who will get all the host rewards. So changing it up a little, last week I had said we would collect orders through Friday, but I've decided to let it run the whole week so you can shop on this link, share it with your friends that want to shop on the link. If you are in one of my virtual parties that your friend is hosting, be sure to shop on their party, but you can still be in the Tasty Tuesday drawing for the host rewards if you will simply send me a private message after you order and say, hey, I just ordered on 
Rebecca's party, but I watched your Tasty Tuesday. Can I be entered in the drawing? So that's how that will work so that everybody can be included in the Tasty Tuesday drawing. Um, again, that link is in the description. It's up or down. I'm not sure which. You can um, grab a piece of paper, keep a wish list going throughout the party, and then when the party is over, click on that link, shop, and you will be entered in to the drawing for the host. As for last week's Tasty Tuesday party, we did get a couple of orders that did not get enough for it to count as a party. So what I have decided to do is update the link and any orders that were placed last week, they're going to also be in the drawing for this week's Tasty Tuesday. So you basically are still in the drawing even though we didn't get enough for it to be a party. I want those orders to still count, so we're just going to add to it. Um, Hey, Miss Lynn. Hey, guys. Hey, be sure to share this video out. Comment and interact with me throughout the party so that I know you're here. I do have my laptop over here that I should be able to see the comments. Um, so please interact with me. It makes it a little more exciting. Um, also, be sure to um, type hashtag PCTT, Pampered Chef Tasty Tuesday, because we are going to work on spreading that. Um, last little piece of business. Um, we talked about this last week on Tasty Tuesday. Any of y'all can host a virtual party of your own and get the double free rewards for June, or I am offering in-home parties here at my house, but you as the host. So you can bring all your friends here to my house. Um, the only date I have left is June 30th, but you can bring your friends here to my house. We will fix a tasty recipe right here in my kitchen. I will provide all the um, ingredients for whatever recipe we fix. If you will just bring any other snack food you want and drinks, I will provide the main meal that we're fixing and the paper products. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let me get my notes out of the way. Um, and again, please comment so I know that I'm not just talking to dead air because that helps me um, keep going and think that, or realize that you guys can hear me. Okay, so tonight is keto pork chops, Brussels sprouts, and asparagus. I mean, yeah, bacon wrapped asparagus. So we're gonna start with the Brussels sprouts mainly because I do need to microwave them for a few minutes to just pre-cook them a little. And we are going to season them with a little bit of Southern juice. So let me pop this in the microwave. I just scooped it out of my mason jar. If you were on last week, um, you would have seen us talk about Southern juice. So this is just bacon grease that I'm gonna microwave just to make it back liquid and we're going to prep our um, Brussels sprouts Why we do that. So, and this is just, uh, once again, my groceries came from Aldi, so um, I really like shopping at Aldi. The only exception is my asparagus did have to come from Publix because Aldi did not have anything, but everything else was from Aldi. So I've already rinsed the Brussels sprouts and we're going to use the large micro cooker to pre-cook them a little before they go in the air fryer. And when I roast my Brussels sprout, I just cut the end off and I've got one of our flexible cutting mats here and I'm using the five inch Santuco knife, which is my all time favorite knife. Hey Danny, can't wait. Okay, I'm glad you're excited about this. It is a super easy meal. And I actually debated about doing this live, doing the entire meal because it will, oops, I just forgot to cut that one in half. It will take a little bit of time only because I'm doing both, you know, both things of vegetables plus the meat. But I really thought it was important to show you, you can do a complete meal in the air fryer for a family of, you know, three, four, or five people. There's three of us tonight, but we're also gonna have some leftovers. Um, and I am not heating up my kitchen with the oven. I don't know where all of you are watching from, but I know here in Alabaster, it has got to be 1,010 degrees, not counting the humidity. So, let me check our southern juice. Okay, we're gonna do a few more seconds. And I just have that Southern juice in a one cup prep bowl. Okay, what are you guys having for dinner or are you not eating tonight? Because no one has answered what they're having for dinner. Maybe you missed that, but as you're hopping on, share with me what you're having for dinner. We are having keto pork chops 
roasted Brussels sprouts and asparagus wrapped in bacon. And I purposefully did not prep anything because I wanted you to see how quick this can be from start to finish. Taco Tuesday, yes, Lauren, it is Taco Tuesday, but I can't do Mexican every Tuesday for y'all because y'all are going to get really bored. So we're still going to um, celebrate that it's Taco Tuesday every week, but we're just not going to actually um, make Mexican every week. All right, so if you don't have these flexible cutting mats, you are totally missing out. Gwen, you had two peaches, but I but you cook lunch. Oh, okay. Gwen, one of these nights you got to come over here and you can have dinner with us after we're done. So if you don't have these flexible cutting mats, they come in two sizes and each size comes with three in it. What I love about them is I have all these ends to the Brussels sprouts and I can just dump them into the trash. Super, super easy. I have probably 30 um, flexible cutting mats in my cabinet. All right, so now I'm going to grab our southern juice. And so I microwaved it 45 seconds and then another like 10 seconds. And I am going to pour this over our Brussels sprouts. And y'all remember why we either put oil or the southern juice over the vegetables before we're going to season them. And I'm also going to use just a little bit of our brand new Parmesan garlic olive oil because it's got fresh garlic in there and I'm not going to press garlic into here because I want it to spread over all of the Brussels sprouts. So I kind of did the southern juice and the garlic infused olive oil. And then we're gonna use some garlic and herb rub. You can use whatever seasoning you want. Well, oh, I forgot to grab my salt. I need to grab my salt as well. So I'm just sprinkling that. Sorry. This is real life. You guys are seeing truly how I make this meal in my kitchen. Usually I'm just not talking to anyone. Yes, Rebecca, so the seasoning sticks. You remember. Lynn, why are you not eating? That is not good. Okay, a little bit more seasoning. And we are going to pop this in the microwave for about five minutes. And while that's in there, we're going to get our breading ready for... Um, the pork chops. The reason I'm doing this five minutes, Brussels sprouts take a little while to cook. So I am just basically pre-cooking them a little bit in the microwave, in the micro cooker, and then they will finish off roasting in the air fryer. Again, I'm using the microwave and the air fryer so my kitchen's not getting all heated up. Oh, you ate lunch late. Okay, I'll give you that then. Although I'm going to be eating dinner really late because we're not going to eat um, until this is done. Okay, so now we are going to prepare the breading, where my sisters, the breading for our pork chops. Now, to keep this keto, my breading is going to be pork rinds. These are from Aldi, one package, and we're going to crush them in the manual food processor. If you're not keto or you're not trying to do low carb um, or anything like that, you could use shake and bake pork or you could use panko breadcrumbs for this part of the recipe, but because I'm keeping it keto, we are using pork rinds. And I just do, a, you know, a couple little batches in the manual food processor. And let me get our little trays. We're gonna use the set of coating trays. And it comes a set of three, I only need two. So we are gonna use the set of coating trays to put the um, crushed breadcrumb or crushed pork rinds in one and then our egg mixture in the other. So just like we use this for salsa. Hey Stacy, chicken on the grill seasoned with potatoes in the air fryer, yay! Green beans with red lobster biscuit, yum! Yum, yum, yum. Okay, comment how many of y'all have an air fryer. Say, I have one. Let me know that you have an air fryer, and if yours is pampered chef, say, I have a PC air fryer. If you just have a different one, just say, I have one. Um, let's take a poll, because if you don't have an air fryer, we're going to talk about it in just a minute. Alright, so, and if they don't all crush up, take the big chunks out, but it crushed them up. Throw them down in the little tray, do the next little batch. 
I also use um, pork rinds when I'm doing chicken parmesan. Stacy has one, obviously. I'm sure you're using it tonight. Gwen has one. Sometimes I put too much in here. This part's loud, but we're going to be done with it in just a second. A couple big pieces that I want back in here. You do want them to be crushed up pretty good because it's serving as basically breadcrumbs or the shake and bake type. Okay, that was the whole bag. My problem is I overfill my processor because I'm impatient. Lynn, yes, you need to get, are you talking about the manual food processor? If you don't have one, you definitely need it. If you're talking about the air fryer, same thing. You've got to have an air fryer. Yes, Pampered Chef's air fryer is the best on the market. I don't say that just because I'm a consultant. I say it because it is so versatile. I promise it is like a little mini oven. Both of my kids, um, they have one at college. Sorry, I just messed up. Okay, that's good enough. They have one at college and use it constantly. So if you have a kid going off to college, um, you've been invited to a graduation party or someone close, I would encourage you get them an air fryer. Whether they're going to be in a dorm room or in an apartment, they can use it and they'll have it forever. Their roommates will probably want one if they end up moving out from their roommates. Okay, so we have our pork rinds in here. I am going to add a little of the garlic and herb rub to the pork rinds because this is going to become our breading for the pork chops. And I'm putting a good bit in here because then we're going to kind of mix it up. And I want it to flavor my pork chops as they cook. Again, you can use any of the different seasonings you want. Garlic and herb or just garlic rub, those are two of my favorite for this recipe. Um, sometimes I will also shred some Parmesan cheese into the pork rinds if I'm wanting a little Parmesan crusted um, pork chops. When I do my chicken parmesan, I definitely shred parmesan cheese. All right, now we're going to use two eggs. Here's another question for you, and please interact. Do you crack your eggs on the counter or on the side of a bowl? I'm going to crack them on the side of this because I grew up cracking my eggs on the side of a bowl. But some people crack them on the counter. That was our Brussels sprouts going off. Wash my hands. I got egg all over them. Give me a thumbs up if you guys are enjoying this. You gotta interact or it gives me a complex. We're gonna pour just a little bit of heavy whipping cream in here. Not much, probably just equivalent to about a tablespoon. And then I'm gonna whisk the egg mixture. Now I'm going to be honest, I have another whisk I usually use for this, but we don't sell it anymore, so I didn't wanna tease y'all. Um, maybe eventually it'll come back, but it's a spring form one or spring loaded one. So we're just going to whisk this around where it mixes up the egg and the heavy whipping cream. These coating trays are great if you're doing any sort of chocolate covered, like desserts or, oh, Lisa, you want both. Well, we need to hook you up. We need to get you set up with a party and we can get you the air fryer really discounted. Or, of course, you can use the link and be in the drawing for the host rewards of this party. All right, so we have our egg mixture mixed up, and I'm just going to set these right in front of me. Let me grab our Brussels sprouts. Oh, that's hot. And this is real life cooking in my kitchen because when I am cooking at home, it is work on one thing, move to the next, kind of have it all going at once. So this is really how it goes. All right, so we have pre cooked our Brussels sprouts. And I'm going to actually go ahead and start roasting these because they do take a little longer than the pork chops and the bacon wrapped asparagus. So I'm going to go ahead and start them in the air fryer. But I'm going to put them, are these not the cutest little cast iron five inch skillets? So I am going to put the Brussels sprouts in here 
on the rack in the air fryer um, so that then they will also stay warm when they're done and we will have um, really crisp Brussels sprouts. And I just try to evenly divide them between the two. So I'm using our chef's tongs to put them in here. I love these little cast iron skillets. You can even do little like brownie desserts in them, all sorts of things. All right, and I'm going to pour the extra little juice because hello, do not waste any goodness. So here are our little Brussels sprouts. This part's gonna be a little hard for you to see, but I'm gonna try to, um, oh, both ways to crack eggs is what you were answering, Lisa. Okay, gotcha. All right, so I have actually got three racks. This one's gonna be for our pork chops. Three racks in the air fryer. The air fryer comes with two, but you can order a rack as a replacement. And I do that, and my kids have three, because you can use all three racks at one time. Um, and so a lot of times if I'm doing broccoli and say broccoli, cauliflower, and zucchini, two of my racks will have vegetables directly on it, and then the third rack will have whatever meat we're doing. In this case, I'm going to use one rack up at the top, one at the middle level, and I'm going to put the Brussels sprouts one on top, one on the other, halfway through. I will flip them because the air fryer is going to beep at me and tell me it's halfway through. So you just stick the trays on there. I am, you've got um, six different settings plus dehydrate and custom. I am going to use roast and it's preset to 375, 10 minutes. I'm going to leave it at that. I could do it longer if I wanted to, but we're going to start with that. We're still going to be prepping our um, asparagus and our pork chops, so if it needs to go longer when I check it, we'll do longer. To start it, you simply push the middle button. It, the first time I pushed it, it was flashing the time. Since I don't want to change the time, push it again, and now it's running. Okay, so now we're going to coat our pork chops. I am going to put them on one of the trays with a piece of parchment paper. This is from Amazon. You can get pre-cut or cut your own. I do this just so they don't stick and it's a little easier to serve them when they're done. You don't have to put the parchment paper, not a big deal, but that's what I am going to do. So, pork chops from Aldi, because if you don't shop at Aldi, you're missing out. Are y'all still with me? Give me some hearts if you're with me and share the love. We've got a few people on here, so hopefully if you don't get to watch this live, you'll get to watch it on replay. Remember to type hashtag replay if you catch it on replay, and you can still order even if you catch it on replay. All right, so these are boneless um, pork chops. You could do bone in, that would work as well. And all you're going to do, and my hands are clean by the way, and this is our food. You're gonna dip it in the egg wash, and I do let some of it drip off. And then you're going to dip and press it down in the pork rinds. And sometimes I kind of pick up the pork rinds and put them on it, but just kind of coat the pork chop with your um, pork rinds. And this was two eggs. Depending how many pork chops you're making, you'll either need more or maybe only need one. Same with the pork rinds. If you're doing more than the four pork chops, I would probably do two bags of pork rinds. It just depends on how coated you also want your pork chops. I am not one that needs them heavily, heavily coated. Um, the pork rinds really give it good flavor and crunch, but I don't have to have them completely drowned in the pork rinds. I've got a gnat flying around here and I'm about to be aggravated. All right, and then we have our last one. Did everyone have a good day today? Let's have a little story time because my day was a little crazy. And again, this is being real. Y'all are in my kitchen with me. I am a real person. So today, well, first of all, Mo had a little surgery yesterday because we don't want him to be a daddy. So poor guy's walking around with the cone of shame not very happy, but he's tolerating it okay. 
Um, and earlier today, my husband had to, we're just going to put this in the sink because this is gross now. Hang on, let me wash my hands. Earlier today, my, hus my husband had to go to um, check on my son's transmission for his car that has been in the shop since Mother's Day. So no big deal. But then he um, gets back from that, and I need to run a few errands. I get in my car, and I notice my front windshield is cracked. Okay, no big deal. Let me get another cutting mat. Um, but then I go back out of the driveway, and... One of my brand new tires, only two months old, is going and is flat with a big old railroad um, spike tie thing in it. So that was my day today. So someone tell me how your day was. Maybe it was a little better than mine, but guess what? I am here now and super excited to show y'all the stress me. All right, so we've got our pork chops ready. Now we're going to get our asparagus ready. I've already rinsed it and I wanted to show you a couple tips. So let me carefully pull out. Um, when you are using asparagus, you never want to eat the very end of the asparagus because usually it's pretty tough. So there's a couple ways you can prep your asparagus. If you take it like this, oops, wherever it breaks, that's the part you want to cut off. However, that's always a lot to me. So if you don't want to do it that way, what I do after I wash it, I put the rubber bands back on and this bottom rubber band, I put where I want to cut it. So this is all together. Where'd my knife go? Oh, here it is. And I am just going to slice just below the rubber band. And then all of my asparagus was sliced at once. Give me some hearts if that is the tip you have not seen before. Yes, Rebecca, I hate car stuff, and currently I really hate it in our house because it seems like all of our cars are messing up. Okay, so y'all like that tip. Yay! All right, so package of bacon. Did y'all hear the air fryer? It just beat, and that means that it's halfway through, so it's got five more minutes. I am going to use what I call the little baby shark mitts. Love these, not just for the air fryer, but things coming out of the microwave. I mean, just anything, but especially love them for the air fryer. So we're gonna open it up, and I am going to put the bottom tray, if I can do this carefully, up on the top rack, and this one where the other one is. And then when you close it, it automatically starts going again. Yes, Lynn, I think that, that I'm not going to take full credit for that little trick with the asparagus. Someone else, I saw them do it um, a while ago, a couple years ago, and I thought it was genius. I think it was like on a food network or something like that, and I thought that it was just absolutely genius because you didn't have to individually slice the asparagus. And I don't like breaking it because to me, they seem to waste a good bit. Um, okay, actually, I'm going to use this rack because I need one of those racks when the, um, the Brussels sprouts are done. So I'm going to use this rack with my parchment paper for our asparagus. And when I do this, I like to do about three or four pieces. It depends how thick the asparagus is. So I'm probably going to do four pieces of asparagus per one strip of bacon. There is nothing magic about this. You don't have to be all super neat. Just simply hold it in a bunch, wrap it around, and then lay it on your rack. And some of them, if they're little pieces, I'll put five pieces of asparagus in it. It just really, I have absolutely no rhyme or reason to this. Lynn, you need the little shark hands. They are awesome. I use them all the time. If I'm taking oh, asparagus down, hey, go back in here. I use them all the time if I'm taking stuff out of the microwave. I do tend to put my um, asparagus on here alternating. Like, I don't know if y'all can see that. Um, just because I think I can fit a little bit more when I do it that way. So we're just wrapping it with the bacon. 
some of these are shorter than others, and some are fatter than others. Again, no magic. Whatever's left over, believe it or not, this is still good reheated because I'll use the reheat setting on my air fryer. Let's see, I think we're gonna do two more because we have room for two more on here. Another way you could do this bacon wrapped asparagus is on your grill pan, but then that means I'm gonna heat up my kitchen a lot more because I have to turn on the stove top. I like using my air fryer, so I am not getting any hotter than I already am from the weather. All right, so there's our bacon wrapped asparagus. Our leftover bacon, I will simply um, put in a Ziploc bag and then we'll have that for breakfast or whatever. Hey, Rachel! Rachel, you'll have to go back from the beginning. Yes, Rebecca, I think I have some baby shark mitts for you. Rachel, you have to go back from the beginning. We are making keto-friendly pork chops, bacon wrapped asparagus, and in the air fryer right now with two minutes left are some Brussels sprouts. So we started the Brussels sprouts first just because they take a little longer to cook, so they're on roast right now. But in just a minute, I'm gonna pull those out and then put our um, pork chops and our asparagus in there. And then at the very end, which I won't do this still on Facebook Live, I will probably pop the Brussels sprouts back in just for a minute or two to do a final crisp on them. Um, I am going to use the bake setting for the pork chops and the asparagus. And what will be great, I'm going to put the asparagus on the top rack because guess what will happen? Any guesses what will happen when I do that? drippings from the bacon will go down onto the pork chop. So it gives a little more flavor to the pork chop. Okay, while we are waiting for our Brussels sprouts to finish, this week we are going to play our little ticket game just like we did last week because then that way you can see the partial um, finished product of my dinner and I can give away some gift certificates. Yes, Rebecca, it also will, yes, Rachel, and yes, it will also make the bacon um, crispy. Okay, let me take our Brussels sprouts out, and I'm going to show them to you. I also need to go get another parchment paper. Oh, I wish y'all could hear them sizzle. Okay, I don't have, I can't hold both of them. Hold on. Hold, please. And I gotta go get a um, parchment paper for that. But here, it is extremely hot. Here are our roasted Brussels sprouts and the little cast iron skillets. And I'm just gonna set those on the stove top for now. Let me go grab a parchment sheet because I need it. I only grabbed one. I need it for our pork chops. So stay right here. Be getting your questions ready. Hey, Ramona. So just like last week, you guys are gonna ask me anything you want about products hosting a virtual party or a party here at my house or about um, starting your own pamper show business. Let me grab that and we'll give some gift certificates away. Okay, so just a little parchment sheet. You do not have to use the parchment paper. I like to use it just because it keeps um, it a little easier to clean this stuff up afterwards. Oh, hello, that is hot. I cannot believe I just picked that up. Hmm. Yep, I'm not always smart in the kitchen. All right, so then we're just going to put our pork chops on here. And I kind of put them in a little bit of a angle. No idea why. These are pretty big pork chops, but they still should fit. The other reason I love these cutting mats, they're dishwasher safe. All right, so let me get my little mitts because this rack is hot. So our bacon wrapped asparagus is in there. Now our pork chops are going in. They are going on this second rack. We are going to use the baked setting, which is at 350. Roast would have been 375, but we're doing 350 for 15 minutes. Um, you guys won't still be on when this finishes, but halfway through it is going to beep at me, and I'll rotate the trays just like I did with the um, the Brussels sprouts. The thing with the 
air fryer, I will tell you, you kind of need to just play around with it. Um, how long you need to cook things really just depends on what you're cooking. It does come with a cooking guide, but like this is just a recipe. You know, it's not even really a recipe. It's just a meal that I created. So I just do trial and error. I cook the um, pork chops till they're done because I don't want anyone in the house getting sick. Okay, so y'all ask me anything about products, anything about what we just fixed, anything about hosting a virtual party or a party here at my house, bringing all your friends here. You're the host, but it'll be at my party so you don't have to clean your house or about being a consultant. Um, we want to be interactive. I do want to show you the pork chops partially cooked and we're going to give away at least two $10 gift certificates. So the more you ask, the more chances you have to win. Gwen and Heather last week won their gift certificates. And what I do, you use the link for this party to shop. Once I get the order, I apply the $10 gift certificate to your order. Um, so really as long as you're ordering at least $10, then you're good. All right, let's see. Um, how do you clean the air fryer? Great question, Rebecca. Okay, two, clean the air fryer, very easy. The three racks that I use, those are dishwasher safe. So just stick those in the dishwasher or hand wash them. It does also come with a rotating basket to do french fries, or John Allen did some um, chicken nuggets in it the other day. You could do tater tots in it. Um, that, they do recommend hand washing, mainly just because of the, um, the way it's designed. The drip tray that is in the very bottom, that you want to hand wash, um, but not hard at all. And then I do usually take a damp rag and just wipe the inside under the drip tray. The door itself will come off if you need to get any crumbs out of it. And the door I usually do just wipe off. So super easy to clean. What is the gift with $80 purchase? Great question, Lisa. So this month it is the corn cob knobs and, <laughs> Troy, are you still on? What is the other one? Hold on, let me go look because I saw it just the other day, but I believe it's the corn cob knobs and there's a choice. You would think I would know, but not doing as many in-home parties, I don't have to talk about as much and I have it in my parties that post but hold on I'll tell you for sure it is oh the kernel cutter or the corn cob holders so that is the gift this month so when you spend $80 or more and when you spend 150 or more your shipping is free plus you get the free gift what else do you want to know what kind of things do your kids make in the air fryer? Great question. Um, my kids will do chicken nuggets, corn dogs, french fries, um, pizza pockets, bagel bites. Um, I think what else? I mean, really, you can toast bread in there. So, like, if um, you want to do garlic bread, you can put that in there. Um, you can do cheese bread. Like, if you're doing cheese toast. Um, those are the main things that my kids fix. If your kids like fish sticks, you could do fish sticks in there. Mine don't. Did I say corn dogs? I think I said corn dogs. John, I don't have that today. <laughs> Rachel, yeah, I thought you said vegetable peel. Well, you're close because it's the corn kernel cutter, so it is for vegetable. So, um, does a book come with the air fryer for tents? Yes, Lynn, it does. And let me grab mine. Um, if I can find, I mean, I have it here, but let me find the right one. Yes, it comes with a cooking guide. And I know it's backwards, but it's the deluxe cooking guide. It not only has some recipes for great things, but then it does have in the front dehydrating, if you want to dehydrate fruits and vegetables, it has a rotisserie setting because there is a rotisserie rod that comes with it. So if you want to do your own rotisserie chicken, you can. Um, it has temperatures for chicken, fish, and seafood, roasted vegetables, um, frozen foods because you can do frozen foods. So it's got tons of great um, guides. Now, 
I will tell you, use this as a guide, but then also just kind of use your own intuition when you look in there and see your Brussels sprouts. I like my Brussels sprouts very crispy. So once we get off, let me show you again. These may look really crispy to you guys, but I like my tray of them really crispy, so I will put mine back in. I like them almost burnt. Same with my broccoli. Not everybody likes it that way, um, but the good thing is mine is in one little cast iron skillet and Chris's is in, the, is in the other. John Allen isn't a big fan of Brussels sprouts, so he will mostly eat the asparagus. Um, have you done hamburgers in it? I have not. I do know some people have. I do know my upline director, she does filet in hers all the time and she does it in the little cast iron skillet. I haven't done that yet because we have a green egg, so it really becomes a battle with my husband. Um, he wants to use the green egg, which I don't blame him. Um, what we have done, we've done a wing wings competition. So he has smoked wings on the green egg. I've done them in the air fryer. We haven't told the kids which one were which and had taste testing. They both were great. So that's something you could do in the air fryer. Um, this would be great if you have an apartment because sometimes you can't have a grill there. Um, so yeah, I have not done hamburgers in mine, but some people have. Is there a way to turn off the air fryer besides unplugging it? No, no, Lynn. It will, um, if you have it plugged in, it will be flashing. Um, my kids do keep theirs plugged in in their apartments. I store mine actually in my laundry room. It's not out on my counter all the time, so I do unplug it. Um, I would recommend unplugging it when you're not using it, similar to your toaster, but that's just me. Yes, Rebecca, the blender behind me is um, Pampered Chef. That is our deluxe cooking blender, and I will be using it in a future Tasty Tuesday. All right, let me go flip our racks. I'm going to show them to you. We'll do a few more questions, and then I'll let you guys go. But I'm just going to show you what it's looking like so far. So, ooh, it's dripping. This is our bacon-wrapped asparagus. I can't show you too much because it's dripping. And the good thing is the drip pan down in the bottom also catches any juice. And then our pork chops, they are not done, but they're getting done. So they'll be good and golden once they're done. I'm moving them to the top for the remaining eight minutes. Now, I will probably still have to do the pork chops a little bit longer, but again, I will check them. I'll check the temperature. You always want to cook the meat to the proper temperature so you don't get um, sick. Uh, is it easy to understand? Yes, Lynn. The air fryer, trust me. If my 14-year-old, and I'm not saying he's not smart because he is smart, my 14-year-old uses the air fryer in the summer, he uses it at least twice a day. Like tonight, I'll put it away when we're done, but I promise, he, he's at a friend's house right now, he will come in and he will fix something around 10 o'clock at night because he eats 24-7, and he already used it when he got in from football to make some um, corn dogs. So yes, it is um, very easy to use. Does the PC have salt and pepper grinders? Yes, we do. Is that Lisa? Lisa. Um, and if I ever say the wrong name on a question, y'all correct me because I want to give credit. Um, the grinder set, they both look like this and it's just a matter of you put salt in one and pepper in the other. They are super easy to fill because the top just unscrews and you fill it. And then, which mine probably has a ton of salt, down below you can adjust how fine or how coarse it grates, or not grates, how fine or how coarse it um, grinds your salt and pepper. Rachel, you love your air fryer. Okay, if y'all already have an air fryer that's not Pampered Chef, if you ever have an opportunity to get the Pampered Chef one, I promise you will want anybody and everybody you know to have one. I have used mine, I can't even tell you the thousands of times. I use mine so much that I'm not gonna lie, in the basement, there is a brand new one in the box, that is backup should this one die. And I'm realistic, eventually it is going to die because it's an appliance and just like our toasters die, just like, um, you know, anything, eventually I'll have to replace it and I don't want to be a day without one so there is one already in the basement ready to replace it. All right, let's do a few more questions and then we will draw for our winner. So what else do y'all want to know? 
Teresa, you want to get the cheese grater. I'm going to give you a ticket for that because I love giving tickets and I want people to have a chance to win a gift certificate. We're doing at least two $10 gift certificates, so ask away. We've got a few more minutes. Um, Teresa, be sure to use the link in this description unless you are invited to one of my virtual parties that a friend of yours is hosting. And if that's the case, order from her party and then private message me and say, hey, Sarah, I just ordered on who's ever party, but I saw you on your Tasty Tuesday um, pork chop meal. Rebecca, if you're on, can you please text mom and tell her I'm on live? Sorry if that interrupted. Um, but Teresa, message me and let me know you ordered. You'll still be in the drawing for the host of Tasty Tuesday because we're going to draw next Tuesday for who will get all the host rewards from this party. Where is the link? Um, Lynn, the link is in the description of this video. So as soon as I finish, if you go back to the video, you should see the link. If you have any trouble finding it, just shoot me a private message and I will send it to you. Um, but you, if you order, you will be placed in the drawing for the host rewards from this party and we will do that drawing next week on the Tasty Tuesday. All right, let's do one, two, three, four, five, six more questions and then we'll draw. So fire away, I don't think I've missed any. If I have missed a question, please just retype it because I don't ever want to miss a question, but I'm trying to look at y'all and then glance down here. So what else would y'all like to know? Or if you need a little more explanation on any products that I use. Um, if you have suggestions of what you, Rebecca, you did not need to just tell me that. Auburn is down 6-0. I have it on, but it's muted. They'll start winning when I get off of here. Yes, Rachel, I do. And let me, well, are you talking about the kitchen spritzer or are you talking about the oil dispenser that has the little squeeze button on it? Yes, sad face for sure. Okay, I have the new spritzer. The oil dispenser I do have, but I haven't used it, so it's in my stash. Okay, here's the new spritzer, but if you're talking about the one that has the green um, like neck around it, I have it, but I've not used it, so I've not taken it out of the box. I have sold quite a few, though. What is the name of the chopping thing? Are you talking about the manual this that we did, that we did the um, pork rinds in? That is the manual food processor, and it is a must-have in every kitchen. I'm going, okay, the other one, Rachel, yeah, I don't, and let me give you a ticket for that, Rachel. I don't have it that I've used it, but I do have it down in my basement, and I have sold quite a few, so I do know a lot of people have enjoyed it. Um, Gwen said, I have the new one. I just wish there was a cover for it. Okay, so I'm guessing there's not. That's how bad, you know, that's the thing with being a consultant. I mean, I do try most of the new products, but not everything, because we come out with so many. Oh, hey, Mom, I see you hopped on. I'll call you when I'm done, Mom. If you were calling about the baseball game, yeah, Rebecca just told me. But guess what? As soon as I finish um, cooking dinner, we're going to start winning, because I'll start paying attention. Hence the reason I have my Auburn shirt on. Um, how much is the chopper? Teresa... Are you referring to the manual food processor that we did the pork rinds in? Or we also have a food chopper itself. So let me know whether you're referring to the manual food processor or the food chopper. The manual food processor is $63. Okay, so yes, the manual food processor. It is $63 and it is phenomenal. I call mine Manuel because it really helps me in the kitchen. It's my sous chef. Um, you can do the pork rinds in there. You can do nuts, bell pepper, onion, um, just so many things. Chocolate if you need to chop up chocolate. It is a must have. Yes, so it is $63. It is amazing. It comes with a lid so that if you want to chop stuff up and then store it either on the counter or in the refrigerator, you take off this processing lid and then it comes with just a storage lid so you can store it wherever you need to store it. Yet salsa, that is right, Rebecca, thank you. 
What size are the little cast iron skillets? Lisa, they, this particular set that I do the Brussels sprouts in, they are five inch. We have a whole line of cast iron. We have a 10 inch skillet, a 12 inch skillet, these set of two five inch skillets. Um, we also have what I call the fajita skillet that just came out June 1st and comes with a um, acacia wood um, trivet. And then, I think that's it. I'm so bad. I mean, I do really know what we have. All right, we got one more ticket, but I can keep answering if you need. So you will not need the hand chopper anymore. Um, Lynn, I still use mine occasionally. It depends, um, but I, if I could only have one, it would be the manual processor. I do use my food chopper occasionally, but that's probably because I have the food chopper in my cabinet, but really I use my manual processor much more. Have I used the new skillet? Rachel, are you talking about the stainless steel eight inch or eight and a half inch skillet? I'm gonna give you a ticket, Rachel, because I'm gonna show my pork chops and then, um, yes, I have used the eight and a half inch skillet. I think that's what you're talking about. Where are my little, don't forget these little baby sharks, y'all. Everybody needs baby shark, shark, shark. I cannot sing, so we're not even gonna go there. Okay, so we still, I think we still need to do a little more. So what I'm going to do, I'm probably going to do roast for just a few minutes. Again, I just eyeball this. I am not, um, I can get it on my rack. I'm not one to really be completely accurate. I'm going to do seven minutes on roast and then we'll check it again. But I'm not going to make you guys stay on that whole time. The iron one, yes, I do have, I use these five inch ones the most, but then I also do use um, the 10 inch skillet. I've made several different recipes in it. I also will use the 10 inch skillet if I sous vide, which is a new thing in our quick cooker. If I sous vide steak or pork tenderloin or anything, I will then sear it in the cast iron when it comes out of the sous vide. Um, Rachel, I have only used my cast iron on the stove top. I haven't even used it in the oven, but I do have to tell you, I am not originally Southern. I am originally from Ohio, so I did not grow up using cast iron. And all of y'all know me as the pampered chef, and that word pampered is very important. I am by no means a fancy cook at all. This is like my jam doing something like this i am not real fancy i don't fry chicken i don't um, do any of that kind of stuff so um you guys probably know more about some of the stuff than me um yes um rebecca we do have a meat thermometer and it is digital and it is awesome so my husband uses it with his green egg we do also use it um, at thanksgiving time when we have the turkey in the oven so yes. Yes, Kara, the baby sharks are, not only are they cute, but they are so handy. So everybody needs some baby sharks. They're silicone, so very easy to clean. Usually I'll throw them in the dishwasher if it's time to run the dishwasher um, the evening that I've used them, or I'll just hand wash them with a little bit of soapy water. Kara, we'll give you an um, entry for a gift certificate because, you know, why not? And see, I tore off more tickets because y'all are asking a lot of good questions. So now we got to use two more tickets and then we're going to draw. No, Kara, and I'll give you a ticket for that too. No, they are not slippery at all. Um, number one, they're silicone, but then I don't know if y'all can see, they're they kind of are grooved. So first of all, your hand fits in them really good, and this is just for your thumb. So you've got a really good grip on whatever you're picking up. So I like that, but they're silicone, just like our oven mitts. And let me grab those. Our, our full-size oven mitts, they too are silicone, and they've got these little dots on them, so stuff does not slip out of your hands. And I love that. I will never use cloth oven mitts again. Um, even if Pampered Chef comes out with cloth ones, which we used to have years ago, I probably won't use them. I love the silicone because I feel like I have a much more secure grip on things. 
Yes, they have a great grip. Okay, one more ticket and then we're gonna do our drawing. We will give away um, at least two, if not three, um, whatchamacallit, three gift certificates, $10 gift certificates that you can use by using the shopping, the party link that's either up in the top of this description or down below. I don't know where it shows up on everybody's device. But one more question and then we will let you guys go for this week's Tasty Tuesday. So what do y'all want to know? Someone asked about hosting. Don't you want to host and get double free this month? Ask away so we can... I know um, this is delayed a little, so if you've asked over here, I haven't seen it yet, but... What else do y'all want to know? Or should I just write someone's name on this ticket? And let them possibly be a lucky winner. Oh, Wendy, you're just joining. No worries. Okay, Wendy, you're just joining. We'll let you be on this last ticket. Wendy, you and Colin will have to go back um, from the beginning and um, watch because we make pork chops that are still in the air fryer, bacon wrapped asparagus, and here are part of our Brussels sprouts we roasted in the little five inch cast iron skillet. Um, what's the subject for the question? It's okay, I put you in here, Wendy, because we're gonna draw. Um, favorite thing to make in the air fryer, Rebecca? This meal is one of them. I love making um, keto chicken parmesan in there. I love making um, chicken tenders wrapped in bacon. Any of my vegetables I roast in there. Um, so yeah, I do. If I can do it in the air fryer, it gets done in the air fryer. All right, we are going to draw. Let's draw this week for three lucky winners um, for a $10 gift certificate. Each one will have a $10 gift certificate. You will have until Monday to redeem your gift certificate using the party link in the description of this live. Um, and then on Tuesday, we will draw for a winner being the host of this week's Tasty Tuesday. All right, so our first winner is Miss Rachel. Rachel McCord, congratulations. All right, let's see who our next winner is. Our next winner, oh my gosh, Rachel, you have got two gift certificates. Congrats, so you have $20. All right, we'll do one more. We might do two more. All right, and I am mixing them up, I promise. All right, our next winner is Miss Kara. I know y'all can't see this, but I'm showing it to you anyway. Okay, we'll do one more because I'm just feeling, um, you know, had a broken windshield, a busted tire today. Why not give away? I need to be more cheery. Auburn's losing. They need to not be. All right, so our next winner is Miss Ramona. And she had asked a question way at the beginning. So, Miss Ramona, I don't know if she is still on, but I will message you. So, um, I'll message all three of you guys about your $10 gift certificate. It can be used using the link in here. Um, Rachel, I'll get with you because your party is still open, but I'll get with you because, um, yay, Kara is on. Oh my gosh, Rebecca, ain't nothing. <gasps> Y'all, come on, Auburn. Anyway, they're gonna start winning as soon as I get off of here. Um, Rachel, I'll talk to you. I'll message you about using your gift certificate. Um, congratulations, guys. Please, please, please feel free to share out this video. Even though people may not get to see it live, they can still watch it on replay. I really want to show people how easy it is to cook healthy meals really quick, not heating up your kitchen. Obviously, we were sitting here running our mouths. If I weren't on Facebook Live while this was cooking, I could have been watching Auburn lose or, you know, just doing whatever. Um, so, more eagle, Kara. Um, next week, join me right here at the same time in my kitchen. Haven't decided what we will do next week. Let's check our pork chops and see how they are. They are looking good. I think they're probably done. So these are our pork chops. Let me check our, oh, yep, our asparagus is done. So, and it's dripping. That is our asparagus. And then, like I mentioned, I am going to stick my Brussels sprouts back in because I like mine to be extra, extra crispy. So 
So I would just put them back in there for probably three or four minutes and our dinner is done. Um, that was squirrel. Okay, so our dinner's done. The shark mint, yes, these are shark, shark, shark. Um, next week, same time, not sure what I'm gonna make. We might do um, a couple little snack foods or um, I don't know, if you guys have ideas, also feel free to comment with some ideas of what you might like to see. I have a list of things that I'm wanting to go through over the course of the next weeks. Oh, Lisa, you're going to Auburn tomorrow for gymnastic camp. Well, drive safe, have fun, more eagle. Um, look for my son, he's down there. You can't really miss him, he's 6'5". Well, you could, because he'll probably be in his apartment when he's not at football, but... Um, yes, Wendy, we use pork skins, and it is super, super tasty. Thank you, Rebecca. Yes, everybody, please do hashtag PCTT, which is Pampered Chef Tasty Tuesday. And I hope you have enjoyed tonight. I know I am enjoying having you guys join me from my kitchen and I will bring another fun recipe or some snacks or something next week. But if you have special requests, private message me. Can't guarantee I can do it because remember, I am pampered. I'm not really a chef, but my goal is to bring you some helpful tips to make things in the kitchen easier, maybe some new recipe ideas and also bring you products that will make your life a little easier. So don't forget to place your orders between now and Monday. On Tuesday next week at the start of Tasty Tuesday, we will draw for the winner of um, this week's party. So they get all the host rewards and we will do something else fun. I hope you guys have a fantastic, safe, and blessed week, and we will see you next Tuesday. Bye, guys.